coffee and i think the world runs on coffee and there's a lot of you know misinformation is it good is it bad uh what is your consensus on coffee and sort of aging and stuff like that yeah in my chapters on uh liver disease depression and parkinson's in my book how not to die i discuss the benefits of coffee for the liver mind and brain Coffee drinkers do seem to live longer lives than non-coffee drinkers and have lower cancer rates overall. Um, at the same time, uh, coffee can worsen acid reflux disease, bone loss, and glaucoma. Otherwise, though, coffee is good for you. Though every cup of coffee is a lost opportunity to drink something even healthier, a cup of green tea. Ah, green tea. Now, I do drink the green tea. Well, what about something like Postum or uh, a.k.a. cereal coffee? Have you have you checked out this at all? Oh, you know, that's a great question. I looked and I could not find any good data on people, you know, eating this kind of like, uh, you know, like the toasted barley kind of stuff. So I do not know. So there's just really no data either way. Interesting. OK. And and as far as decaf goes, uh, what's the difference between decaf and regular? Oh, caffeine? Uh, you get the same benefits in terms of longevity. Um, so it's not the caffeine. Uh, it's probably uh, the what's called the chlorogenic acid, um, which is the principal antioxidant in coffee beans, which boosts autophagy, which is this kind of house cleaning process within our bodies to kind of clean up old um, kind of misshapen proteins in our body that accumulate with age. Um, but the chlorogenic acid level contents vary as much as 30 fold between different coffees. Most of that range is because of Starbucks because they oh they roast their beans so dark that they destroy most of the antioxidant content um and so i would encourage people to uh um uh, the the healthiest coffees would be um paper filtered um brewed coffee um uh, has more chlorogenic acid than espresso um uh freeze-dried instant is fine but the um the, the paper filter um, uh, traps some of the cholesterol raising compounds in coffee, which, uh, um, which is why you get even a greater longevity benefit from paper filled brood versus just coffee in general. Now, you said something about caffeine, caffeinated coffee, uh, kind of canceling out some of the arterial benefits. Oh, yeah. So um, in the short term acute studies, um, uh, you you see this. Uh, you can see a diminishment in even uh, blood flow in the brain uh, mm -hmm. by eating caffeinated drinks. But in terms of what, how, how does that translate into long term effects? When you look at large observational studies, and now there's been done with literally 30 million people um, over decades. Um, those drinking coffee, caffeinated or not, do tend to um, live longer lives. And so, whatever kind of short term acute effects. Uh, caffeine can have on brain arteries do not seem to uh, impair health in the long term. The interesting, you, I think you said 12%. 12% of the people who drink coffee are likely to not die of any cause, right? Which is a very interesting thing. But uh, is this just because of your alertness that co coffee, you, you're more or less likely to have an accident <laughs> or something? Just, I don't know. Right, yeah. All cause, yeah, decrease in all cause mortality, which is to say, um, added up all, you know, in terms of that's like kind of synonymous with the decrease your risk of premature death. But in turn, <laughs> no, no, but co coffee, caffeine in general, um, does indeed save lives on the road. You want your truck drivers um, who are often being paid to get there uh, quicker. They paid more if they get there quicker. Um, uh, we do want them as caffeinated as possible to not uh, kill people on the road. <laughs> Stay alert, trucker capsules all night. Yeah. Um, so, and also, I had to I had to point this out in the book. It's it's you say coffee enemas we should steer clear of coffee enemas citing the physicians say things like rectal burns and my, my question is well wouldn't you want to let the coffee cool down before you went you ahead? would think <laughs> you would think um yeah yeah so uh so right no but it's not just rectal burns you can have electrolyte abnormalities all sorts of things perforation yeah i encourage people to uh, drink their coffee from the uh top down rather than the bottom up <laughs> and you also recently said cola as well is not a good in any orifice it doesn't matter what study they do if you put cola in well any... i mean they, uh, they have not tested all the orifices <laughs> to be to be completely fair but of the orifice tested so far 
cola should be uh, off the table. Okay, good to know. I'm glad I already knew that. I didn't have to go and make my own little science experiment. Um, so, also, you know, th there are science problems with, like, I just read this study about coffee, and it was done. It said, well, coffee make you live forever, but it was done by the Italian Coffee Association. So you, you do have to look out for these sort of conflicts of interest, right? Absolutely. In fact, that's the first thing I do when I look at a study is who funded it. Because um, you're concerned about the so-called funding bias or sponsorship bias. Now, that doesn't mean the study is necessarily bad, but it's certainly you take it with a grain of salt and you want to make sure that the study was not designed to have a kind of predetermined outcome, as so often happens um, in the scientific literature. Yeah. Well, if it's harmful, but if it's money making, hey, we might have to, you know, fudge the numbers a bit. Um, 